Well, as I say, uh, as I've been introduced, my name is George Perrin. I'm the Director of Town Centre Projects, and it's a delight to welcome you here to not only the cinema, but to uh, Stockport as a whole. Uh, my job is to paint some of the background to this development, uh, explain some of the challenges, and then um, perhaps just outline some of the outcomes which we've uh, so far achieved. But as I said, part of my, my job is to paint some of the background to uh, the scheme. So some background to Stockport. Clearly, you all know where it is. You, you came here, uh, hopefully all by train, I suspect not. Um, it's actually a very prosperous borough on the southeast edge of uh, Manchester. And of course, it sits right on the Manchester Ring Road. So its location is, is brilliant. It's made better by the fact that you can get to London from the station in, I would say, under two hours. It's about two hours, but every 20 minutes. It's a wealthy borough, it's got a well-educated borough. It's quite polarised. We have some of the poorest areas uh, in the northwest, but also some of the wealthiest. Uh, we have loads of people working here. We've got um, a massive investment programme of over a billion pounds into town. And that's where I'm going to take us now, what the council is doing to maintain its position, or perhaps, maybe better expressed, recover its position. So background. Red Rock is not the only thing which the council's been uh, up to. If I can take you sort of almost on a tour of the town, over there somewhere is uh, Market and Underbanks. Can you see that on the left-hand side of the screen? I don't know if this works. Yes, there you are. And that's an amazing area of historic buildings, which we've been effectively trying to regenerate for something like 40 or 50 years without overly much success, it must be said. I think we've reached the cusp of a really successful regeneration there. Uh, the council's taken a very direct role, and hopefully before Christmas, we open something like, uh, well, it'd be like altering a market. For those of you who know, it's a big food court. Uh, we've got Steve Pilling there, and that should open in a beautiful building called the Produce Hall. But whilst that's been happening, uh, quite a few bars and uh, microbreweries, my favourite subject, have been opening up in, in there, and also we're introducing residential there. So you move around, and that was our first attempt, uh, Covent Garden Village. My only contribution to that was to name it Covent Garden Village, um, uh, of residential, because residential is part of any development in a town. And whilst the council has a considerable degree of social rented, it lacks private owner occupation and private rented. And the whole point of that was not only to regenerate where the plane fell in about 1967, but to bring in more people living in the town. And that theme of residential is very much part of our continuing plans, with plans for, I, I never get the figures right, but like 2,500 new dwellings in the next, uh, Paul Richards is here, about five years or something of that order. So you move around, have the museum and art gallery, and then you have Stockport Exchange. And for those of you that did come by train, you'll see that's been an absolute, well, that's been an absolute pleasure. Um, it was a, a rather tired leisure centre, to be fair, uh, which the council acquired in 2011 and has invested considerable sums of money. It's put a new multi-storey car park there, which has re released space for a 60,000 foot office block, fully let. Fully let has a certain beauty all of its own, doesn't it? Fully let within five months of PC has even greater beauty. And, uh, and a hotel, uh, which is, uh, well, you wouldn't get in there tonight, uh, which is, I think, part of a regeneration of a town centre. Uh, and uh, so successful that the council is going now to fund a further 60,000 feet. Uh, in which there's considerable interest, but if anyone's got some office requirements, do come and see me. As you move down that grey line, that's the A6, you come to what's the interchange, and that's the result, really, of two immovable objects meeting uh, with a good architect. Uh, that's one of the best sites in Stockport, and there's a, a transport interchange, and I wanted to park, and near the twain will meet, until you meet the architect that says, no, no, you can put a park on top of the interchange. And that's what we're going to do. That's a fabulous scheme. And surmounting that park will be some of our 2,000 dwellings, 200 units. Uh, and that'll be in a parkland setting. I, I commend that scheme. That will go on site next year. And so you come down to uh, Red, Rock spot stock, uh, Red Rock and Merseyway Shopping Centre. We own Merseyway. We bought that just as we were sort of halfway through this job. Uh, and we've always wanted Merseyway and Red Rock to work together uh, for the benefit of the town. So that's some of the background in terms of geography, but what about uh, history? So there you are, 2000-ish, uh, you've got the Trafford Centre open, the motorway's been opened all the way through, 
and you need to think about what you're going to do to sustain your town. So we produced a, a master plan. That's that thing uh, there. Uh, great master plan, and all going well. Loads of OGU procurements. Don't we all love OGU procurements? The OGU procurement went really, really well. We got Lend Lease, all looking good. Great scheme, I can remember talking about it. Looks good, doesn't it? Classic architectural drawings. And then what happens? Can anyone remember what happens? I can hear a mumble there. What happened? 2008. Um, that was such fun. Everyone remembers 2008, don't they? And we're still sort of recovering, aren't we? Uh, there was a crash, and uh, Lend-Lease decided to take their uh, dollar back to uh, Australia, which is fair enough. You couldn't really blame them. They actually were very honourable about paying all our fees and what have you. So the classic local authority answer is what? Yes. So you get loads of reports done, isn't it? <laughs> so we got loads of reports, and they're very good. Don't get, don't get me wrong, they're, they're, they're very good. You need them, and I'm sure they answered loads of great questions. Um, but actually, my recollection, and this is a very personal reflection, is that what actually got this thing going was a cup of coffee. Now, I've never named this person before, but I remember, I don't know if he remembers it, I remember sitting in the town centre around 2010 with a bloke called Dan Davis. I'm sorry for all you agents, but it was Dan. And he said, George, 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 don't be silly. What are you going to do? You, you can achieve 80% of what you want to do for 20% of the cost by moving the cinema offer. Moving the cinema offer from Stockport Exchange down into uh, the town centre. And, and that, I think, convinced us that that's what we uh, should do. So we, we got off and started thinking about the project. And that's what it looked like uh, before we started. Now, you have to say, it doesn't really show it in its... Um, uh, full uh, beauty, because uh, along there, it looked a little bit like the back end of Beirut. Here you had a very, very attractive Bailey Bridge, and it actually wasn't um, a Bailey Bridge. It was um, a repaired, refurbished, replaced Bailey Bridge. And that takes you back to the fact that, in fact, when we bought Debenhams, the idea, which was in the Debenhams um, deeds, now, now I'm in trouble, Jamie? <laughs> there we go. Uh, was for a development scheme running along there. Uh, date of that scheme? 1972. So it does go back uh, a rather long way. So we got going, started building a scheme. And by October, December 2013, we'd put together a paper which said to the executive, as then was, the cabinet, that actually, just give us 40 million quid and we'll build you a cinema with a food and beverage offer. It was conditional. We had to get so many food and beverages, otherwise the cinema would, um, wouldn't open, and the food and beverage wouldn't open if the cinema wouldn't open. So it was a little bit, bit tricky. Uh, we got the money together. We uh, got planning permission. It took me longer, much longer than it should have done. Uh, and I got the approval to the tender in 2015. Now, that's slightly summing up six months of the most tendacious negotiations I've ever had. Uh, and I, oh, it was horrible. But we actually started on site in 2016. And that's what it looks like when you're sort of building this uh, architecturally interesting building. Uh, one of the interesting points there I'm reminded is that uh, we argued with the building contractor over risk. Who would take the ground risk conditions? And they said they would for half a million quid, 500,000 quid. So we said, no, 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 no. You take it to 1.5 metres, I think, and we'll take it beyond that. So we stripped the site, and what's the first thing we discover? Four wells. Oh, no, no. How am I going to explain that? Well, actually, it was OK, because they only cost us 20,000 quid a pop to fill in. So there's an example of risk transfer. It was much easier for us to take that risk, and it's actually profitable for us. That's it being built, and that's it towards the finish, just before it opened. And whatever you may think of the building, it's pretty visible on the motorway, uh, and you're not really ever going to miss it, I don't think. And that's when we opened the light cinema with ZZ Pizza Express. And of course, at that time, Stockport did not have ZZ Pizza Express or anyone else like that. Why? I don't know. I don't know. 
but it was a nightmare trying to get any sort of evening economy here. And that, for us, is a huge, huge success. Now, you've seen this slide before. Apart from one, one line at the bottom there, can you see that? Opened on time and within budget, November 2017. Uh, I mean, it's, I can only assure you it's only by luck. But um, I remember, and, and this is a point which is worth m making, I think. I remember going to Eamon Boylan, who was the uh, chief executive in the council. And I said to him, we signed the contract with Waits. And he said, how much is that, George? I, don't, I said, 27-something million quid. And I said, look, look Eamon, you, you've got to understand, we'll never deliver it for that. And Eamon got it. Eamon understood. He said, look, George, don't worry. As long as you keep it below a million quid, any overspend below a million quid, we'll be OK with Don't worry. I know if there are councillors here, please do not repeat that story anyway, will you, please? All right? But by luck, and not perhaps by judgment, it was actually delivered on time and within budget. Well, that's, that's amazing for a local authority, isn't it? I mean, it's incredible credit to Gardner Theobald, who project managed it for us. And that's it being open. And um, I, I know when they opened the Bolton Light, it was all panic on building regulation approval. When we opened this one, it was all about fire regulations. And we didn't have a fire certificate until about 48 hours before we opened. So walking down the, end, uh, the opening and seeing a fire eater there was actually piquant and ironic to say nothing else. But it was a very successful opening. And since then, it's really improved the town centre. Uh, I'll, I'll go through this slide in some detail. But the main thing that we wanted to achieve was more visits to your town centre. Now, I don't know what towns you come from, but if anything like Stockport, we're losing something like 3% a year in terms of visits, as far as we can tell. Maybe a bit less. Uh, that's 10 million visits, so next year it will be 9,700,000 9, or something. Those 700,000 new visits are vital to the success of the town. You have to find ways to bring people into your town centre. And if there's any measure of success, it's that. Uh, I do think it's a brilliant cinema offer. I, I come here myself, and I, I remember we're opening in Christmas. I think we watched It's a Wonderful Life. <laughs> Best film ever made, Mr. John Sullivan. Not, uh, what's the one you like by Quentin Tarantino? Or for Pulp Fiction, dreadful film. Um, not only did we get cinema, but we got uh, a gym. Now, it was going to be retail, but retail's dead. And the gym offer, again, increases the number of visits. A mass market dining offer. We didn't have that before. That's so important to us. The public realm, I think, is lovely. Whatever you may think of the building, and I know what has been awarded, don't worry, hurt me. It's always good to end your career on a low, isn't it? Um, uh, the, the, the people love it. I've heard, I think, two criticisms of it. Better parking offer, and I, I'm not convinced so much about that, because if you look up there, um, what we've got is we used to have an at-grade car park. Now, if I had my time again, and remember, we started this before we owned Moseyway Shopping Centre, I'd have kept the at-grade car park. Don't dump your at-grade car park. People love that. But it is a very fine multi-storey. The links to Merseyway are not as strong as they should be. That's a mistake, perhaps, or, or probably driven by cost and ownership. The disruption, disruption, uh, you've got to be so careful you don't kill the patient whilst you're actually doing the operation. And although we catered for our smaller retailers, I do wonder if we'd have spent more time with our larger retailers if that would have made a significant difference. Uh, above all, I think uh, we missed the boat a bit. Um, for various reasons, the project gets delayed. All projects get delayed, don't they? But had we managed to progress it perhaps 12 months quicker, we might now be dealing with um, CBAs and what have you. We wouldn't have the number of empty units that we have. And I thought that was a, a, a shame, really. We delayed because of planning. We had a, 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 another idea about how we get access, which changed the design. And of course, as you know, it's architecturally controversial. And... Um, uh, I think one has to spend more time getting the architecture, architecture right. So nearly there, nearly landing. Uh, the lessons I've learned, though, the lessons I've learned, and I hope these will be helpful to you, is once you've got a plan, try and stick with it. You have to fight through the ups and downs. Uh, I'd make no secret, we would have loved Cineworld to come down from Grand Central. They're an existing customer. They wouldn't do it. We were very fortunate to uh, meet John and Keith, and we're very happy to do business with them, and they have proved probably much more successful than Cineworld, unless you happen to come from Cineworld, but it has been brilliant uh, working with them. Uh, without doubt, you need good leadership from the top. 
Now, when I started this, uh, uh, Eamon Boyden, who's now gone on to run Greater Manchester, uh, was in charge, and another bloke called Paul Lawrence, who's now running Edinburgh or something, that's uh, been brilliant. They, they, they got it. Uh, you'd get a decision from Paul, he'd simply say, yup. My lawyer hated that. They have to have official officer decision records, don't you? An email saying, yup, is not generally taken as being a decision. That, that, <laughs> that leadership's now being really well carried on by Pam, Pam Smith and Caroline, and I think, I don't know if they're, they're here this afternoon, but the other person you need to meet is uh, Paul Richards, who's the director of regeneration for the whole borough. He's far more able than me. He's uh, absolutely brilliant. Um, really important for us, anyway, was cross-party support. Uh, regeneration in the town has never been a political football. It's always been something that all members are keen upon. Uh, yes, don't delay. You really have to move fast. And don't kill the patient uh, whilst you're doing the operation. But I think uh, of all the lessons that I've learned doing this, uh, I've got one personal uh, reflection, uh, and, and it's this. Money is vital. Profit's absolutely uh, a priority. Making a sense of place is so, so important. The, build, the, the money will pass in about 24 hours. The sense of place will be there for a lifetime, 25 years. Uh, but actually, they're not, in my view, and this is a personal reflection, as important as one other thing. And it's what makes uh, a town, what makes regeneration happen. And of course, it's people. It's people. And uh, I'd like to take this opportunity of uh, really signing off by saying it's been absolutely wonderful working with all the people on this project. They are articulate, bright, clever, and determined. And actually, of course, uh, they're people just like you. So thank you very much for listening. I'd be happy to answer any questions. And my thanks for your attention.